first you're going to want to pick out your webbing and your fleece color. Next, you need to cut up your fleece based on the measurements that are listed in the description below. Uh, you're going to have to cut it based on your dog's particular measurements. Once you have all your fleece cut out, you're going to need to iron down the fleece so that it's easier to work with later on. Generally, I iron all of the fleece pieces at once. Then, you have to cut out your webbing. In order to make sure that the webbing doesn't fray, what's really important to do is to put a lighter to it just for a couple of seconds to finish off the edges. Do this with all of your webbing pieces so that you don't end up with frayed pieces down the line. Once you've cut up all your fleece and your webbing, you can lay out all the parts of the harness to make sure you have all the required materials. See the notes below for how each part of the harness comes together. Now it's time to set up your sewing machine. I like to pick thread that matches the webbing so that you can't see the stitches in the harness. Measure your dog from its chest all the way down to the largest part of its belly for the front chest strap. Fold the fleece over and then iron it flat. Double check your measurements. Place your webbing on top of your fleece, leaving six inches on one end and three inches on the other end. Next, you're gonna sew around the perimeter of the webbing to secure the webbing onto the fleece. Once the webbing is secured on the fleece, we're going to create a loop on the 6 inch end for where the buckle is going to go through. Sew down the end of the webbing to create this loop. Sew over a couple of times to make it very secure. The other end of your chest strap is going to have a tri-glide on it. This will be used later to adjust the length of the chest strap. Sew the tri-glide down on the underside of the fleece. Reinforce it with a couple of stitches and potentially a square of stitches. Next are the two shoulder straps. As you did before, fold these over and iron them flat. Place the webbing on top of the fleece to set everything up. Next, leaving equivalent parts of webbing coming off each side of the fleece, sew down the entire perimeter of the webbing onto the fleece. I like to start by sewing the ends of the fleece onto the webbing and then sewing each of the long sides just to keep it in place better but the way you do this part is entirely up to you. Here's what it looks like after the two ends of the webbing are secured onto the fleece. Now I'm going to go and sew down each of the long sides. Sometimes it helps to use a starch spray to keep the webbing in place on top of the fleece, or you can use pins to make sure that it doesn't move around. I generally just hold it in place with my fingers, 
but sometimes it leads to not as straight of a cut. Now you're done with the sewing part of the fleece onto the webbing for one of your shoulder straps. Next we attach a triglide onto the end of the webbing on one of the sides. It doesn't matter which side you pick as long as both sides has an equal amount of webbing coming out over the fleece. You have to make sure you do have a little bit of extra webbing on the end of each side or else it's not going to work for putting your harness together later on. Sew down the triglide like you did for the chest strap and go over it a couple of times to make sure that the stitches are strong enough. Now you're done with the first shoulder strap. The second one is going to be identical. So once again, place webbing over the fleece and then sew around the perimeter of the webbing to attach it to the fleece. Make sure you leave some webbing sticking out on both sides of the fleece so that you can attach the harness together later on. As we did before, we need to attach a triglide onto one end of the webbing. So we loop it through and then we loop it underneath the fleece and we sew it in place with extra stitching so that it doesn't become undone. Now that you have your two shoulder straps and your chest strap, it's time to put them all together. We're going to be attaching each of the straps to a two inch triangle loop. It doesn't matter which order you attach them to. Here I'm doing the chest strap first. I'm also going to include a different angle of this to make it a little bit easier to understand how to pull the webbing through the triglide. Here's another look at attaching the chest strap to the triangle loop. We put it in through one part of the triglide and then we loop it over and pull it through the other part. Next we're going to attach the two shoulder straps to the triangle loop. The concept is exactly the same in terms of how to attach it to the triglide. I'll attach the next shoulder strap up close for a different angle so you can see exactly how we connect it to the triglide. The part of the webbing that doesn't have hardware on it is the one that you're going to pull through first. And then you pull the webbing through the triglide that is closest to it. And you loop it over. And then you pull it tight to secure it. Now you're done with the front of your harness and the next step is to work on the strap that goes around the back around your dog's tummy. You'll want to measure your dog at the part of its rib cage that's the largest. We'll start by sewing on the plastic buckle and triglide. The triglide will be attached to the harness 
just like the triglides were attached to the other straps we made earlier. Sew down the triglide, going over it a couple of times to make it very secure. Next, slide the fork end of the plastic buckle onto the other side of the webbing. We aren't going to be sewing it down just yet. Follow these steps to get the other end of the webbing through the triglide to create the adjustable part of the girth strap. Slide the webbing through the inner slot of the buckle, then pull it through. Loop the webbing over the outer slot of the buckle and pull. Hold the webbing in one hand and the triglide in your other hand. Slide the webbing through the slot of the triglide that is closest to the webbing. Loop the webbing through over the triglide and into the other slot, then pull through. Pull until your strap resembles what you see here. Prepare the fleece for your back strap. Start by ironing it completely flat. Then fold the edges over so they meet in the middle. You can also use fusing web to help the pieces stick together while you're ironing them. This will make your fleece easier to work with. Place your webbing on top of your fleece to get a better idea of what your strap will look like when completed. I like to start with a line down the middle and along each side for more stability Now we can visualize how we're going to attach the front part of the harness to the back strap. I start at the midpoint of the back strap where I've already sewn down a line. I generally measure about two and a half inches from the middle on each side. Then I put in each piece of the shoulder strap to get a better idea of what the opening will look like. The 2.5 inch mark on each side of the midpoint is where the outer part of the fleece should be attached. There are multiple ways to do this part of the project. You can either connect your straps on directly onto the fleece as your first step, or you can sew around the inserts for the straps first. I always choose to sew around the inserts. So I sew everything except the inside of those purple markers that I made. The entire length of the back of the strap was sewn since we aren't attaching the side straps into that part. As you can see here, there are flaps where we'll be inserting the straps. Here you want to sew up until where you have your purple markers for where your strap will be inserted. You want to sew around these two slots 
so that you can still fit in your strap. Now it's time to put it all together. Insert your shoulder straps underneath the webbing. You will be sewing over the top of the straps to secure them in place. You're going to sew above the webbing multiple times to make sure that your harness is properly reinforced. Keep sewing until where you marked the next strap insert. Attach the second shoulder strap onto the other side. You may need to go over some parts of the webbing, but both your straps should be attached. Loop through the flat part of your plastic buckle, as shown. Then, sew on the plastic buckle. I'm going to review how to add on many different kinds of leash attachments. These are entirely optional, so you may use as many or as few as you'd like. The first that I'm going to cover are generally used for pull straps or to attach the leash to the back part of the dog. Next, we're going to put together the counterbalance handle attachments. There will be two of these with four D-rings. Attach a D-ring to each side of the webbing and sew it on. If you don't have an industrial strength machine, your machine may get stuck at this point because of the thick fabric. Don't worry, just rethread your machine and try again. I'm using the cheapest brother machine, so I frequently get jams when I'm trying to go through thick fabric. It's not a big deal, but sometimes it can be a little annoying. Attach your D-rings to each side of the counterbalance attachment. Then do the same thing for the other attachment. You're going to need two different attachments to go on each side of your dog to hold up the handle. Let's visualize how each of these attachments will look on our harness. The smaller ones will go right where the shoulder straps are connected. The longer ones are going to start at the end of your fleece and go just about to where the shoulder straps are connected. Let's start by sewing on the smaller attachments. These will be placed behind the fleece and sewed on from behind. It doesn't matter how you sew these on on the back or what stitch you plan on making, but I recommend reinforcing them so they're very strongly attached. Now we're going to sew on the counterbalance attachments. These may be harder for your machine to sew on, so they may take a couple of tries. Now that we have all of our D-rings attached, 
We can create the pull straps or any handles. The size of your straps is completely optional. Here we'll be making a 15 inch pull strap. Place your webbing on top of your fleece as you did throughout this entire video. Get your trigger snaps ready and sew around the entire perimeter of your webbing. Attach a trigger snap onto each end of your webbing. Loop it through and then sew it on to the back of the fleece. You can reinforce it by sewing a couple of stitches over and over again. The semi-rigid handle I'm creating here ends up being about 12 inches from the trigger snaps all the way to the top of the handle. As all the previous steps, fold in your fleece after ironing it and then place webbing on top of the fleece to be sewn on. The way you sew will depend on whether you are using plastic tubing or corset boning to hold up your handle. If you're using corset boning, you actually want to put the boning into the fleece and then sew right around it. If you're going to be using plastic tubing, we essentially will be creating a larger tube within the webbing and then we will thread the tube through. Sew the webbing down along the two long lengths of the webbing. Don't sew across the width just yet. Now that we've sewn the two lengths, we're going to be inserting the plastic tubing similarly to a straw. 